And welcome back to the Cincinnati Reds franchise mode here on MLB The Show 24. It's been a quick minute, but we are back here with the Reds franchise. We are in the month of June, and the Reds are sitting at about that 15 games over 500 mark. As again, in the month of June, going on to July. In today's episode, tomorrow we will have the All-Star break and the trade deadline, most likely. And a big story coming out of this summer has been the emergence of Rhett Lauder. This is a guy who had to come back into the rotation after an injury to Hunter green and Rhett Lauder has been that guy 2.81 ERA for the right-handed pitcher a guy who was talked about in trade talks earlier in this series but he's really come on as one of our better pitchers right now and the Reds are having a very good season but only two and a half games up of the Milwaukee Brewers the team we talked about in the last episode um, and we'll see how things go here down the stretch in 2028 TJ Friedel is killing the baseball batting 336 in the leadoff spot currently we've moved him back to that leadoff spot and moved Ellie De La Cruz down to the two. It is the 4th of July, and the Cincinnati Reds are taking on the Washington Nationals, a team that has been very mediocre throughout this entire series. But it is what it is. The Nats are 39 and 45, and the Reds are 14 games over 500 with a record of 50 wins and 36 losses. There is Rhett Lauder. Again, 2.51 ERA so far this season. Five starts, four no record. What a year he's had so far. We're looking to continue that and really make it interesting when Hunter Green gets back. Now, I'm not saying Green's going to be the one pushed out of the rotation but I don't know. Rhett Lauder really showing why he deserves to be a staple in this Reds pitching rotation, something that we thought we were going to get a long time ago out the guy. But we'll see. Pitching has been a high point of this team so far in 2028 as Tyrone Godfrey, the best hitter on this Nationals team, is going to pick up a two-out base knock, bringing up the four spot in Jorge Polanco, and Polanco will strike out on a changeup to the bottom of the first, and pitching for the Nats will be Tristan McKenzie, the former Cleveland Guardian with an ERA of 3.71. We'll see this Reds lineup and TJ Friedel leading things off on the 2-2. Friedel's got those USA socks for the 4th of July and Friedel will ground out to second to Polanco. And here is your Reds lineup for tonight. It goes Friedel, De La Cruz, Harper, Olsen, Benson, Diaz, Alvarez, McLean, Hutchinson. Of course, we're still dealing with the injury of Spencer Steer, which again, will make things interesting when he comes back because what do we do with Lloyd Hutchinson who's in the 9 spot batting 215? We'll have to figure out once we get there. Bryce Harper up to the plate after that Ellie De La Cruz single, Ellie swipes second, giving Harper a runner in scoring position on a full count, but Tristan McKenzie gonna blow the fastball right by him. Two gone for Matt Olsen on the 1-1 pitch. Olsen shoots one up the middle. That ball is gonna get through, and Ellie De La Cruz will score. one nothing Cincinnati with Olsen on first with a single. Will Benson looking to add on. Gonna hit that ball deep into left center field. Will the center fielder and Godfrey get there? He will not. Olsen chugging around third. He will score. Benson to third. He's in there with a two out. RBI triple to make it 2 nothing Cincinnati. Yandy Diaz now comes up and gets blown by with the fastball. But 2 nothing Reds as we go on to the top of the second. Taylor Ward having a phenomenal year for the Nationals. Will strike out though on that louder slider. Bringing up MJ Melendez. Swing and a miss on a slider again. Two gone for RH3. Robert Hassel the third. That's going to be strike three on a fastball up and in. It's a 1-2-3 inning for Rhett Louder. All with strikeouts. The man has really turned around here in 2028. Again, a staple of the rotation, at least it feels like, from his first five starts and into his sixth tonight. Two gone for Lloyd Hutchinson on the 2-2 two -two pitch. Hutchinson chops one at first. It's going to be off the glove of Robert Hassel. And okay. Hutchinson's going to be on with a single, they will call it. They will give him a hit. Two gone for TJ Friedel. He will pull that ball into foul ground. The right fielder, Andre Haywood, will have it in foul territory as we go on to the third. Carter Jensen leading things off for the Nats. That one's going to be popped into center field. There is TJ Friedel. One down the inning for the nine spot. Brady House, the third baseman, steps into the box in the 2-1 pitch. And House pulls one deep left field. Nothing Lloyd Hutchinson can do but watch. Brady House with a one-out home run to make this one 2-1. to one, Still in favor of the Reds, but Brady House again gets the Nationals on the board. 354 feet for House's seventh of the season. Here comes Andre Haywood, the rookie on the 1-2 pitch. Hits one softly in the ground to Ellie De La Cruz. You know, the arm that Ellie has. He got it. Okay, that was a lot closer of a play than I thought it was going to be. Two down for Nassim Nunez, who is still looking for his first hit in real life. Um, and Nassim Nunez is going to blast one, though, over the head of TJ Friedel. He's going to be on with a double. As I speak right now, 
down, Nassim Nunez is starting for the Nationals in their game against the Diamondbacks. Hopefully, he finally gets his first hit in real life today. Tyron Godfrey, though, is going to ground out to Matt McClain as we end the top of the third. To the bottom of the third, L.A. De La Cruz leads things off for the Reds. He's going to hit that ball high in the air, right center field. That ball does have some carry off of the curveball. That ball's up and it's out of here. I didn't know if it had the carry to get out of the park, but I guess it did. Ellie De La Cruz with a solo shot in the right center field, his 22nd of the season, and we have not hit the trade deadline yet, or the all-star break. What a year for Ellie De La Cruz. Again, the average is what he'll always seem to have on this franchise, batting around that 250 mark, but Ellie De La Cruz makes this game three to one. Bryce Harper flies out into center field, but again, one gone, two run lead for the Reds here in the third. Matt Olson is gonna chop that fastball to first base. Robert Hassel the third, not normally a first baseman. He has been playing in the outfield his entire minor league career, but it's fine, they have him at first. Two down for Will Benson. That one is going to be blooped into left field and caught. To the top of the fourth, Jorge Polanco leading things off for the Nationals. That's strike three looking on a slider. One out for the five spot. Taylor Ward, the former Los Angeles Angel, will strike out on a slider as well. Rhett Louder sets back-to-back -back guys down a slider. Can he get Melendez? Well, he will get him to pop out. Foul ground, there is Yandy Diaz. Rhett Louder through four innings, only giving up one run. Yandy Diaz now steps into the box. Tristan McKenzie floats that curveball, but that ball is going to be fielded by Nassim Nunez. One out for Francisco Alvarez on the 1 1 pitch. Alvarez has been doing all right this season. Penn to actually playing pretty well, 285. Um, again, I think I'm figuring out his swing as I did just pop that ball out. But again, we are making harder contact every single time with Francisco Alvarez. Matt McLean puts one, someone in the gap, but that ball is going to be cut off by Jorge Polanco to the top of the fifth. Robert Hassel, the third, leaving things off for the Nats. And that one is going to be blooped in to left field. RH3 is on with a leadoff single for Washington. Bringing in Carter Jensen. The catcher comes up and hits one sharply on the ground. That ball is going to get past Ellie De La Cruz. Hassel moves over to second. First and second, no outs as Brady House, who has homered in this game, steps into the box. Hits one hard to Matt Olsen. Oh, and Olsen tags out Jensen at first as well. It's a double play. Two gone for Andre Haywood, and he gets flown out into center field to TJ Friedel to the bottom of the fifth. A two-run lead still for the Reds as Lloyd Hutchinson leads things off in the inning, hits one hard on the ground, 104 off the bat, but straight to the former Rule 5 draft product in Nassim Nunez. TJ Friedel now goes perfect, perfect, straight away center field. That ball is out of here. TJ Friedel goes yard. Again, not what he's known to do, but Friedel, who came into today batting 336, has his seventh home run of the season, over 400 feet off of the bat. My goodness, TJ Friedel, what a season he is having. I know he dealt with an injury midway through the year, but I feel like the man should be an all-star. We will see what happens come tomorrow's video or our next Reds episode. I don't know if that's tomorrow or not. But anyways, we go on to Cole Henry coming out the bullpen for the Nationals 3.63 ERA. He will inherit runners on first and second. The Reds go double steal. Ellie De La Cruz on the front side. Bryce Harper on the back side. Second and third, one out for Matt Olson. Here he comes on the one-two delivery by Henry and Olson with a very bad swing on a changeup. Two down at four will. Benson, can he extend the lead for the Reds? He will not. Hits one on the ground to Jorge Polanco, and the Reds only get one from this inning, of course, with the home run by TJ Friedel. Rhett Louder, though, still doing his thing here in the sixth inning. He'll strike out Nassim Nunez. Tyron Godfrey up in the one-two pitch. Puts one on the ground hard, but straight to the second baseman, Matt McClain. Two outs for Jorge Polanco. On the 2-2 pitch, Polanco puts one on the ground. That ball will get past Matt McClain. Polanco's on with a two-out single. Bringing up the five spot, Taylor Ward. Pitch 101 for Louder. Swing and a miss. Rhett Louder is dealing here at home on the 4th of July. We go to the bottom of the 6th, and Yandy Diaz leads things off by hitting one the opposite field. That ball's down the right field line, and Yandy Diaz leads off the 6th with a double, putting a runner immediately in scoring position for Francisco Alvarez on the 1-2. Alvarez, though, just can't catch up to the Cole Henry high heat. We've got one down for Matt McClain, the long-term second baseman of this red squad. He'll put one on the ground, and that ball's played by Brady House. We will have Yandy move over to third for Lloyd Hutchinson, and Hutchinson hits one right to Nassim Nunez. 
The Reds will go to their bullpen here in the seventh. Gregory Soto, who's been pitching a 4.89 ERA so far this season, will be out first, and he will see MJ Melendez on the 2-2 pitch. Melendez hits one hard, and that ball will drop in front of Lloyd Hutchinson. Leadoff runner on for the Nationals, bringing in Robert Hassel the third on the 1-2 pitch. Hassel on the ground. Ellie will get one. 91 speed, though, by Hassel. will beat that throw out at first. Runner on first with one out for Carter Jensen. Here comes Hassel. That's strike three, and Alvarez gets Hassel at second. That's been the huge upgrade for the Reds in terms of our catching position. Again, I like Shea Langeliers. I like Tyler Stevenson, but none of those guys played as well as Francisco Alvarez does behind the dish. Yes, Shea Langeliers would rival the arm, but at least in terms of all around defense, yeah, Alvarez is as good as it gets, at least in the year of 2028. We go on to the top of the eighth, Felix Bautista pitching for the Reds again. We kind of just go closer based on whatever opposing team we play, rather it be Bautista or Garrett Crochet. Tonight it lines up to be Garrett Crochet, so Bautista's on. We've got one out, runner on first for Nassim Nunez. Nunez hits that ball hard in the right field. I've never seen Nassim Nunez hit a ball that far, but that one's going to be caught by Bryce Harper in right field. We've got two down for the three spot again. Their best hitter, Tyron Godfrey, who they got with, I do believe, the number one pick a couple years ago, will hit one on the ground to Matt McClain. McClain to De La Cruz. It is a 4-1 game still for the Reds as we go on to the bottom of the eighth. Matt Olson leading things off. He is going to hit that ball in the right field. Again, just out in front of that one. It's going to be caught in right. We've got one down for Will Benson on the 3-2 pitch. Benson hits that fastball in to left center field, and it will get down. Benson's on with a one-out single. He's going to try to leg it, though, into two, and that throw will get him, though, at second. Benson out advancing. Two down for Yon D. Diaz. He's got the double earlier tonight, and he will get tied up on that curveball as we go on to the top of the ninth. Here he comes. Garrett Crochet. Now, Crochet's been so good this year, and even last year, too. The problem is the game in the CPU doesn't pitch him much in games that I don't play, so that's the problem of why, again, he's not an all-star, why he doesn't qualify for all these ERA leads and stuff. It just, it kind of sucks, but in the game, Crochet has been dominant. I understand he's a starting pitcher in real life now, but again, in the game, he is a relief pitcher, and that's kind of the way I have it with Michael Kopech, too. Kopech is recognizing the game as a, as a starting pitcher, and we just pitch him as a relief pitcher, and as we just said all that, Garrett Crochet goes one, two, three in the top of the ninth. That is a no-sweat ninth inning and a no sweat save for Garrett Crochet to win this one for the Reds by a score of four to one. It was the power again out of Ellie De La Cruz and TJ Friedel, which won it for us. Obviously, we had the runs in the first inning as well, but a dominant performance for the Reds. Rhett Lauder remains undefeated as a starting pitcher here in 2028. Again, in the long run, pitching records don't really matter, but it's a good show for something, I guess. Rhett Lauder's 5-0 here in 2028 as he continues his dominant season after being called up from AAA. So, folks, thank you all for watching episode number 87 of the Cincinnati Reds franchise mode here on MLB The Show 24. If you haven't yet, though, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for more. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy the video. Give folks a thing out for watching. And Mamba, forever.